I'm Sarah Ashford and I'm really excited to share with you lots of quilting projects and fun things over the next months and year ahead. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a pin cushion um, using a block called a pinwheel block. Uh, it's really really fun and really really sweet. I hope you enjoy it. So here's the pin cushion that we're going to make today. As you can see, it's really, really cute and adorable. Um, it's made up of four half square triangles and I'm going to be showing you a quick way to make those where we make them all in one go. And then the other thing I've done that's really, really sweet is I've put a fussy cut motif um, on the back. So here we've got a really cute little moon uh, which is a really nice extra feature. Okay, so what we need then to start with is squares. Now these squares are all cut at exactly four inches. Now, as I was saying, we fussy cut the back, so I just wanted to show you how I did that with the fussy cutting. I've got a little ruler here. Now these little rulers are really great for little jobs because it just means that you can move them around much more easily. And when I cut out my square, I made sure that the center of my moon was two inches down and then two inches across so that it was central. So if you're fussy cutting your background fabric, just if it might be something that you want to have in the center. And if you did want it in the center, that's how you do it. Okay, so to make our four in one half square triangles, what we're going to do is we're going to take the two pieces that make up our half square triangles on the front. And we're going to put them right sides together, like so. And then we're just going to grab some pins and it's up to you how many pins you want to put in. So I'm just going to put a couple of pins in going to put in a couple of pins like that and then I'm going to stitch a quarter of an inch all the way around the edge. I'm not going to leave a gap, I'm going to stitch all the way around the edge. Okay so I'm going to do that and then come back and show you what's next. Okay so I've got my four inch square, I have stitched a quarter of an inch all the way around and then I just took a slightly longer ruler this time I've drawn a very faint line in a cross formation, but you don't necessarily need to do that because we are now going to cut our squares in half and then in half again. So lots of pressure on my mat. I'm actually using a smaller rotary cutter than usual. Um, this is the 28 millimeter and it's actually really handy for little jobs like this. I just feel like I've got that bit more control. So I'm just going to cut that in half like that and then I'm going to very carefully lift it up. I'm not going to move it. And then I'm going to just place it the other way. I'm just going to turn to the side. Again, lots of pressure on the ruler, pushing down and cutting it like that. Let's do that one more time. That's good. Okay, so now when I open up, you will see that I have got my four half square triangles. So I'm going to take those to the iron. I'm going to press to the dark side, which means I'm going to have my dark fabric on top. I'm going to iron it to set the seam, open it out and press it like so. Okay, as you can see, I've got my four half square triangles now, but we've got these extra ears on here. Now, we don't want those, so I'm just going to take my rotary cutter, and you can use a ruler if you want to, but uh, I think that it's really quite easy just to trim off the ears like this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put the half square triangles into what's called a pinwheel block, which is this block that we've got here on the um, finished pin cushion. It's a really pretty block. I love the pinwheel block. It looks really beautiful in quilts and you can have so much fun with colors. And I think you really get that sense of movement of a pinwheel spinning around. Okay, so this is the fun bit, trying to orientate your uh, squares in the right way to get that pinwheel formation. So I'm just referring to mine because it can get a bit confusing. 
so I'm just copying the angles here and I can see that that one goes there and then I can see that that one goes like that. So once you've done the first one, the best thing to do is you're just rotating it a quarter turn each time to complete your pinwheel. So that's my pinwheel there. Now when I sew this together, it's actually going to be too big. We're actually going to be trimming it up. Um, but I think find that that's a great way to get a bit more accuracy. It's exactly what we did with the disappearing nine patch block um, that we made in my previous video. If you saw that one, we made it bigger and then we cut it down to size so that we knew it was nice and accurate and nice and neat. So what we're going to do, we're going to stitch our top two half square triangles together and our bottom two half square triangles together. On the top one, I'm going to press my seams to the right. And then on my bottom one, I'm going to press my seams to the left. And then I'm going to nest the seams. Okay, so I've sewn my top two half square tri triangles together and my bottom two as well. My seams to the right on this side and to the left on this side. Uh, and now again, if you saw my disappearing nine patch um, video you will see that we nested the seams for that project it's something that's quite a common thing to do because it just allows all the seams to sit nice and flat I'm going to do exactly the same again so I'm going to place them right sides together and I'm just going to fold back because I want these seams these joins to line up exactly so I can see that they are lining up there and what I'm going to do is put a pin in here on this side of the seam and then I'm going to do exactly the same on this side so then I know that when I come to the sewing machine nothing's going to move but those joins are going to stay lined up nicely so all I'm going to do now is take it to the sewing machine and stitch across the top and then open it out to finish my block Okay, so I'm really pleased with how I've managed to get all my points in the centre matched up. And that was using that pinning technique of pinning either side of the seam. It really does work um, because it just stops things shifting around under the sewing machine. So then I've just opened it out and ironed it. And I wanted to share a quick top tip with you. Uh, what I like to do, because it is quite bulky in the centre now. We've got quite a bit of fabric there. But what I like to do once I've ironed it, is when it's really really hot what you can do is just place a ruler over the top you can put a book on the top if you want to and that just traps the heat and that just helps get everything nice and flat now if you remember we cut our squares at four inches but now this block is actually measuring more than four inches because we, um, we're, we're cutting them on the diagonal. So we're going to trim them back now to four inches. So make a four inch pinwheel block. So I'm going to put my ruler, let me just show you here. See, I've got the number two here. I'm going to put my central line on the two inch position. And I'm just going to trim that up on this side. Again, using my little ruler, I'm putting quite a lot of pressure on now because this um, block is a little bit more unstable because we have got that bulk in the middle and we don't want anything to move. So I'm putting lots of pressure on. Two inches, off we go. Just going to do that bit. There we go. It's, sometimes I do have to give it a bit of brute force. And then I'm just going to rotate it 180 degrees. I'm going to do exactly the same again. Put my ruler on two inches, lots of pressure, there we go, that one was better, and then I'm going to do the same, exactly the same, this way, so ruler on at the two inch position, lots of pressure, just make sure that you've got a nice 90 degree angle, which I have, there we go, and then this side, And here you will see you've got your two inch position here, but here's your four inch position here. So I can see that that's going to be perfect four inch block. Lots of pressure. There we go. So I've got my four inch pinwheel block here. Just close that blade for safety. 
Um, now, do you remember earlier I cut my four inch block for the back, which I think is really cute with this sleepy moon on the back. I think this one might be awake. Lovely fabric. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my backing fabric and lay it down flat. And I'm going to take my pinwheel block and place that down flat as well. And what we're going to be doing is stitching all the way around the edge, but we need to leave a gap for turning because we're going to be stuffing our pincushion with toy stuffing and we need to leave a gap to stuff it and then we're going to hand stitch it closed. So what I'd like to do is just take a little marker pen of your choice and I just like to mark in a gap just a couple of inches so that you know where to start. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to stitch forward and then I'm going to go back on myself just to reinforce it because I don't want it coming undone. And then I'm going to stitch all the way around until I get to the next gap and then I'm going to do the same. Stitch up to the line, go back, go forward to reinforce it and then we will be ready to uh, turn it out. But I'll show you that bit next. So I'm just going to pop a few pins in. So don't want this to move. Like so. That should be plenty. And I'm going, get, going to go and get that stitched up now. Okay, so here you can see I just stitched forward and back here to reinforce it, stitched all the way around and then reinforced it again. Um, we're going to turn it out, but before we do that we're going to clip these corners because we want to get uh, a relatively nice uh, point in those corners and so we just need to get rid of that excess bulk. So I'm just going to very easily take a little corner off each of those just make sure you don't cut into your actual stitching because otherwise we'll have a hole which we don't want that's for sure there we go so that just gets rid of the excess bulk and now for the fun bit I'm going to turn this right sides out I'm just going to get my fingers in there just being careful with it because you don't want to put any undue strain on that gap but actually it's not too bad at all just going to push it out to start with with my fingers wasn't it cute so cute each corner and then what I like to do is you can use a knitting needle or you can use anything long and pointy really but I've got one of these things here it's called that purple fang, not sure if you can see that. Um, I think it came free with a magazine, but I'm sure you can purchase them relatively inexpensively. Um, and then you can just use it to push out the corners. There we go, so that's making my corners look much smarter. It just gives your work a nice crisp finish to have your corners nice and pointy. So let's just push this one out. Whoops. And this one. And there you go. Okay, so our next job will be to get some toy stuffing and stuff it. Okay, so I'm just taking the toy stuffing and stuffing it right into the corners. And what always surprises me is just how much stuffing you need. You think that this is a tiny little project and that you won't need much, but it really does squish down quite a lot. Um, so you always need more than you think. It's very hard to say. And also I think it's a, a personal choice really, just how um, dense you want your pin cushion to be. Um, now for some people when they make pin cushions, they want them to be weighted. They want them to be a little bit heavier. Uh, so you can buy walnut shells to um, put in there, for example. Uh, but I don't want mine to be heavy I just want mine to be nice and light like that so I'm pretty happy with that okay and I'm just going to try and push the stuffing away and I'm just going to now this is the tricky bit not gonna lie I'm going to close this gap so I'm just pinching it and I'm going to put this is very tricky but it's doable. I'm just going to put some 
binding clips in to hold it in place. And then there's two ways of doing this. You can either take it to the machine and just do a very small, close to the edge machine stitch in a neutral thread. It's a bit tricky. You wouldn't want to use pink because that would show on the on the uh, green and you wouldn't want to use the green because it would show on the pink so you might just want to use a neutral thread or the other option which is what I'm going to do is stitch it by hand um, and I'm just going to use a really tiny slip stitch to close the gap. Okay so here I am um, ready to do my slip stitch. I've tied a knot in my thread and I've come up from the underside. All I'm going to do is I'm going to go down the pink and come up keeping it quite small then I'm going to go down into the white and come up into the white whoops and sometimes it catches the corner take it off and then keep and then repeat pulling it quite tight because these are going to be invisible stitches so I'm going to do that all the way along whoops, to close my gap 